Hello and welcome back to another Parry This History video. Today we are going to be continuing our Kings of England series with King Eadwig, the sixth king of England in the House of Wessex. This video will serve as a biography for the king, but will also touch on important historical events or anything else of note during his reign. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, I recommend them all, as I have covered the first five kings of England already. But with all that in mind, let's just dive on in. In the annals of Anglo-Saxon England, amidst the tales of valiant warriors and famed kings, the name name King Eadwig often evokes a tale mired in youthful indiscretion, church controversies, and the overarching power struggles of his era. Ascending the throne at a tender age, Eadwig's reign stands as a testament to the challenges that even royalty faces in navigating the treacherous waters of governance, while being ensnared by personal desires and influences. This paper delves deep into the life and reign of this enigmatic figure, stripping away layers of legend and lore to present a comprehensive account of a young king whose reign was ephemeral, yet undeniably impactful in the annals of the English monarchy. Join us on this historical journey as we traverse the highs and lows of King Eadwig's reign, shedding light on the nuanced interplay of power, faith, and personal choices in shaping the destiny of a king and his realm. Section 1, Early Life and the Family of King Eadwig. Born circa 940, King Eadwig emerged into the world of immense change and dynastic challenges. He was the eldest offspring of King Edmund I, frequently referred to as Edmund the Magnificent, and his first queen, Elgafu of Shaftesbury. Edmund I's rule was marked by fervent efforts to reclaim territories from Viking invaders, weaving a tapestry of battle and diplomacy that his son would inherit. Young Eadwig grew up in the shadows of these grand narratives looming over him. However, family dynamics would play a pivotal role in shaping Eadwig's early years. His siblings, Edgar, who would later become known as Edgar the Peaceful, and a lesser-known sister, stood alongside him in the lineage of potential heirs to the throne. Tragedy struck the young royal family when King Edmund I met an untimely end at the hands of an outlaw in Gloucestershire in May of 946. This tragedy propelled Eadwig and his siblings into the limelight far earlier than anticipated. As children, they found themselves navigating the complex web of Anglo-Saxon politics. With their tender ages preventing them from assuming the throne, it was their uncle, King Eadred, who stepped into the role of monarch. As Eadwig matured, he witnessed the rule of his uncle, a reign marked by its own set of challenges, which undoubtedly served as a learning experience for the young prince as he awaited his destiny to rule. Section 2, King Eadwig's Early Reign, The Young Monarch and His Controversies. On the 23rd of November, 955, at the tender age of 15, Eadwig ascended to the Anglo-Saxon throne following the death of his uncle, King Eadred. This transition was not just a change in leadership, but a symbolic handover of power to a new generation. However, with youth came impulsiveness, a trait that was quickly attributed to King Eadwig and would define the early years of his reign. His coronation ceremony in 956 in Kingston-upon-Thames stands out as one of the most dramatic events of his early rule. The opulent banquet that followed was supposed to be an occasion of unity and celebration, but it became a source of scandal that would cast a shadow over Eadwig's leadership. The young king, perhaps overwhelmed by the weight of the occasion, chose to absent himself from the proceedings. When his absence was noted, the future St. Dunstan, abbot of Glastonbury, went in search of the young monarch. To his and many others' dismay, Eadwig was discovered in the company of a noblewoman and her daughter. The exact nature of their engagement has been a subject of debate, but the indiscretion, whatever it was, not only flouted royal protocol, but also painted Eadwig as an irresponsible king. This episode created created ripples of discontent, and the relationship between Eadwig and the powerful religious figure Dunstan soured considerably, setting the stage for further confrontation. While this incident stained the initial impressions of Eadwig's reign, the young king sought to assert his independence and authority in other ways. He embarked on an ambitious quest to recalibrate the royal court, distancing himself from the powerful factions that had held sway during King Eadred's time. Among these were his grandmother, Eadgifu, and other powerful nobles. In his attempts to reshape the dynamics of power, he aimed to reduce the influence of those from the previous regime. This era of Eadwig's reign was marked by strategic realignments with the king making new appointments whilst curtailing the influence of the established order. While this approach gave him temporary control, it also
also sowed the seeds of further discord that would come to characterize his entire reign. Section 3, King Eadwig's later reign, Turmoil and Division. As Eadwig's reign progressed, the young king found himself grappling with the consequences of his earlier decisions. The power dynamics within the court had shifted dramatically, and not always in his favor. Those who had lost power and influence began to consolidate their positions, creating factions and deepening the divides within his kingdom. One significant consequence of his actions was a strain in the, his relations with the church. His decision to marry Elgafu, a choice that had already been controversial due to their controversial encounter during his coronation, became more contentious when the church voiced concerns regarding the union's legitimacy. They cited that the two were related, with Elgafu being a cousin to Eadwig. The church's displeasure at the union led to a rift between Eadwig and the Archbishop Ada, who ultimately succeeded in annulling the marriage. The king's reaction to this was swift and stern, as he sought to assert dominance over the church. Notably, Dunstan, who had found himself at odds with the king since the coronation, was exiled to Flanders. This exile, however, had unforeseen repercussions. While in Flanders, Dunstan aligned himself with the Benedictines, a move that had long-term implications. The Benedictines, with their influence and reach, began to rally support for Eadwig's younger brother, Edgar. The growing popularity of Edgar and the divide in the church's allegiance became more apparent and threatened the very foundation of Eadwig's reign. The political fissures reached their peak in 957, when the regions of Mercia and Northumbria, dissatisfied with Eadwig's leadership, pledged their allegiance to Edgar. The threat of a full-blown civil war loomed large. To quell the rising tensions, the kingdom was divided to avoid bloodshed. Eadwig retained control of Wessex and Kent, while Edgar governed the northern territories. This division, though meant to be a temporary measure, showcased the diminishing power and influence of a king who began his reign with promise. The River Thames became more than just a geographical landmark, it demarcated the divisions of loyalty in a kingdom that was once united. Eadwig's late reign, marked by political upheavals, strained relations with the church, and internal factionalism, served as a stark reminder to the challenges that can confront a ruler, especially one so young and thrust into power. Section 4, Conclusion The End and Aftermath of King Eadwig's Reign King Eadwig's reign, fraught with challenges and divisions, came to a tragic end on the 1st of October 959. He was barely out of his teens. The exact circumstances of his demise remain shrouded in mystery, but his sudden death fueled speculations and added another layer of intrigue to his already turbulent reign. His resting place is in the Newminster in Winchester, a poignant reminder of a young king who could not fully realize his potential. As for heirs, Eadwig left none, further simplifying the path for his brother, Edgar, to unify and reign over the entire kingdom. The legacy of King Eadwig is complex. Overshadowed by the achievements of his younger brother Edgar, often referred to as the peaceful, Eadwig's contributions may seem muted in comparison. However, it would be an oversight to dismiss his reign as inconsequential. While his reign was marked by political upheavals and discord with the church, it was also a time of significant change and transition for England. His decision-making, whether viewed as impetuous or assertive, showcased a king keen on exerting his authority and independence. His interactions with the church, especially the controversial annulment of his marriage to Elgafu, highlighted the complex interplay between religious and monarchical powers of the time. In terms of contributions to the arts and the church, direct attributions to King Eadwig are limited. However, the period of his reign and the years that followed were significant for the arts and religious reforms in England. While Dunstan, after his exile, became a seminal figure in the Benedictine revival, which brought about monastic reforms, the association with Eadwig indirectly places the king within the transformative period. In retrospect, while Eadwig's reign may be perceived as tumultuous, it set the stage for reforms, consolidations, and the strengthening of monarchical and ecclesiastical institutions in England. In the annals of Anglo-Saxon England, King Eadwig's reign stands out, not for its longevity or monumental achievements, but for its whirlwind of controversies, decisions, and youthful assertions. Comparing monarchs across epochs is fraught with challenges, especially when they reigned in times of distant political and cultural landscapes. King Eadwig's tenure, albeit brief and turbulent, reflected the complexities of a youthful ruler in the midst of a powerful court, in the midst of powerful court factions and religious influence. Labeling him as the worst Saxon king might be an oversimplification, given the intricate matrix of challenges he encountered. While he may not have attained the revered stature of some of his predecessors or successors, Eadwig's reign was, without a doubt, a significant chapter in the evolving tapestry of Saxon England.